it began with a display of the sort of thing we wanted. We wanted bombers. And Sergeant Knight, DFM, first New Zealand airman decorated in this war, began the campaign in which the Prime Minister bought the first bomber bond. We can produce plenty of airmen here. We have thousands already in this country. We've sent more than 6,000 overseas, and still they come. These young men in the Air Cadets Training Corps, reviewed here by the Governor General, prove that we're beginning where the Kiwi left off. New Zealand is taking to wings. To give them machines, New Zealanders in many centres paid two pounds and more per head. Whanganui was first. Down below there, seen from one of the planes they're helping to buy, is Blenheim. The people of Blenheim and Napier were second after Whanganui in contributions per head. Here is the national record. When the planes flew over the cities, one look was enough to make a quick decision. They might have been unfriendly planes. So we paid our money to put more of our men and our machines up there in our sky. The cash mounted to one million, two million, two million and a half and more. Christchurch, and the people of Christchurch heard the noise, saw the point, and bought nearly 300,000 pounds worth of bonds to build the Air Force. Among the cities, Palmerston North led in sales per head. Next best was Wellington, and Auckland sales passed the half million mark as the best total in New Zealand. Pretty girls were good saleswomen, but the best selling point was the knowledge that our fighting services could use what we could give them. Now was our chance to show that we could give it and New Zealand produced the 10-Day Wonder, a campaign that brought in almost twice as many pounds as there are people in the country. Wellington had a rainy day to begin the campaign, but what a day it was that ended the job. On the last day, Wellington sold 92,000 pounds worth of bonds. It was a great effort, but they deserve it and more. We'll give them what it takes, whatever it takes.